Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another wonderful edition of Victory Church with a twist on this fine Sunday morning. Oh my gosh! For now, we feel the wisest decision is to continue with online church. A big shout out this morning again to all of our faithful and committed Victory Church family. So good to be spending time with you guys again this morning. And a big warm welcome to all those of you who are visiting us, maybe even for the first time. Thank you so much for the privilege you're giving us or inviting us into your home in this special and this very unique way. Thank you for watching on your mobile phones or around a tablet, or maybe you and your family are gathered around your TV screen and streaming it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We trust and pray that God will meet you exactly where you're at and that you'll have heaps of fun along the way. We're gonna dive straight into it this morning and spend some time with John and Lee on the couch and be sure to listen out. They've got a big announcement about next week. Hello, welcome to church. Welcome so to good church. to see you wherever we may find you. It's Christmas in July still at Victory yeah. Church. We've got some exciting news for you. Are you ready? Welcome to church on, on the, the streets. Street. We're trying to get church out into the streets a little mm. bit more. And so we have a Wednesday night together. We are praying, doing prayer walks uh, at various places scattered around the Fishhook area. And uh, just praying for our communities to come down and join us Wednesday at 5.30. Details and a location will be sent out as to where and what is going on. Then we've got some really fun news coming up. Are you ready? Are you ready? 2nd of August, we are going to take a one week break with um, Church Online, Church with a Twist. Yeah. Just one break because we have a plan. We're going to do something that's completely different. So what you need to do is you need to be looking out on our WhatsApp group yeah. to see what's going to happen. We are not going to be in our homes. Yeah. We are going to be meeting in a different way and it's going to be super fun. Yeah. There's going to might be even be some gifts and prizes Ooh. and surprises. Ooh. So you're not going to stay on the couch guys on the 2nd of August. Church is hitting the streets and yeah. we're going to let you know exactly what that is very soon. Then we have not forgotten July. It's Christmas in July. Christmas in July. What a cool uh, thing to celebrate. And this whole week, our, um, some of our teams, well, teams have entered an amazing race that's been so much fun. Mm. You entered, Jono, what were some of your favorite so things? so good. We drive around at the girls all over the place, went to Nuruk, Sunset, uh, Red Bag, supported them. We did yeah. all kinds of business shout outs. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. How much fun do they have? I bet you're going to look after that next yeah. year. And then later on today at our Zoom yes. meeting, when we grab a cup of coffee yep. after church, come to Zoom, there, Lance, Chantel, Emma, who are our amazing judges of their amazing race, yes. will be announcing the winner. Ooh. So if you entered, you definitely want to be Ooh. there because the prizes are so cool. And yes. a shout out to all of our businesses yes. in the valley who have come on board. and. Prizes are really, really cool, guys, so you don't want to miss out on Zoom today. And then Christmas in July, that's us for now. Then wanted to say we have got an amazing weekly uh, Victory podcast with Sid and Joe. It is so good. I hope you guys have been listening. Uh, it's really fantastic. Really want to encourage you. Uh, share it with your friends. Have a listen when you're driving. Uh, wherever you're going it's short little snippets uh, that they're doing and it is so encouraging on on a couple of different topics so look out for that the victory podcast with sid and joe it is absolutely awesome welcome to the very first episode of victory podcasts obviously there's huge amounts of podcasts out there lots of fantastic content and some of it feels maybe a little bit far away for some people so our aim is definitely to speak to our local context and then from that perspective, we'd love for the podcast to be able to have a big reach. 
beyond just a Christian folk. And in order for us to do that, we think if, if in our local context, our people have something in their hands that they think this is a good enough something that's local that they can pass on. Yeah, and we're going to be chatting about things in our heart, having conversations with each other and with people covering topics of the Bible and apologetics and the questions that you guys are asking that we're asking. And the nice thing about it being in this podcast casual conversation format is that it is accessible to everyone. You can listen to this on your phone, in your car, you can easily WhatsApp it to someone. As with the podcast, we're going to try and capture what the conversation is about yes. more than anything else. Okay, awesome. Well, let's get started. Every week we just do a little Victory Kids preschool update. Um, for those of you who don't know, our church has a preschool just down the road in Fishuk. And um, things are going really well. Everyone's gone into a rhythm. The kids are so happy. Most of them are back now. Yeah. And um, we just have a little, a little fundraising um, scheme happening. Everybody needs masks. And these masks are Precious Gloria made for us to raise some funds. Yeah. They are in six different colours. Oh. They tie. Do you want to just do you want to look at yeah, them? I was going to they look tie at, at the back, oh, so they don't so make nice. your ears all sticky outy like this. And um, <laughs> they are forty rand. You can take a whole lot and then try sell them to your friends or give them away as gifts. Or um, they're pretty cool. Yeah, so very nice. let us know. Masks fundraising for Victory Kids forty rand each, or there's a special deal on for July only. Yeah. Six for two hundred rand. And then we really want to just encourage you and ask you just to pray for a couple of people in our church. Uh, Chad Williams uh, is has been tested positive for COVID and he is in isolation. So we are praying for you, Chad, and really just ask uh, our church uh, just to pray for him uh, during this time that he'll be healthy and safe. Uh, and then Ken Lawton uh, is just really struggling with some health issues. So Ken and Pam Lawton, we're praying for you guys. Uh, we miss you like crazy. So we just ask you as a church to come and, and pray with them uh, and just lift them up in prayer. And really want to encourage you if you're going through anything or you need prayer uh, or anything, just want to have a chat, just reach out to us. We'd love to pray with yeah. you uh, and chat some stuff through. We've got counselors as well that can help you through uh, whatever you might be going through. Victory Kids with a twist. This week they've done a special Christmas. So it's a Christmas wow. special. It will be on our YouTube page. So please go and have a little look. It's especially for kids. They love it. They get a Bible story. Mm. They get a song. Yeah. They get some jokes with Josh and Caleb. Yeah. And it's super fun. So make sure you go and look for that um, after church today. Okay, have fun guys. See you soon. Yay, see. look out for the details about Church on the Street. Yay, we're excited. Today we're going to tell you a little bit about our testimony. We had had in our hearts such a long time to get a place that was a little bit bigger, accommodate our needs, have a little space for our kids to play on a safe, in a safe uh, environment. Um, the place we were at before wasn't really that safe. Lots of dealing of drugs and when I looked at a couple of places and I spoke to my wife, five months later we started applying for, for, for this place um, and then we started the process. Um, initially, it looked like a house wouldn't sell and somehow, strangely, God had sent in a buyer. Um, people were very, very in love with the place that we, we had and we started the process. So, yeah, that's where it started. So with the hard lockdown, we were forced to be inside. My wife wasn't working and in a very strange way, with the hairdressers not being able to work, the restaurants being locked down, we thought, so where's God in all of this? And I, and I told my wife, you know, let's just listen to the quiet voice because with all the things that's happening, we would have needed to pay the bond on the new place. And God had somehow made it possible for us to be quiet and realize that his timing was... It's it was, not our time. It's not our time. So we had to wait. And the waiting and remaining in God had taught us a little bit of extra patience that mm -hmm. God's timing is perfect. So with um, the move to the new place, the uh, hairdressing sector opened up, the, rest the restaurant started trading. So that means that God has made another intervention for us to be able to pay the bond and the finances would be released to pay for the new place. So in God's time, I think everything worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. What we can say is that we had the song that we actually did in the church once, We Need a Move. 
and that was our move for this place. And what I can say is that there is actually a word for you in a song. The right song will come for you and it encourages you just to hold on and to focus on God actually because He is everything. You must put Him first in everything. As many of you know, I get to work with Sweet Peas Newborn Blessings, which like the Red Bag Project and Victory Kids, is one of our church's outreach mission ministries. And we're in a wonderful position where we get to be able to assist needy families of um, newborn children who have very little or next to nothing. And in this way, we are able to display the Father's incredible heart of compassion and generosity towards our community. These two traits I see in the early church were the things that really set them apart in those days. If we read in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 2 from the Passion Translation, we'll see, For even during a season of severe difficulty and tremendous suffering, they became even more filled with joy. From the depths of their extreme poverty, super abundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant generosity. So there we see it, super abundant joy overflowing into extravagant generosity. Isn't that what we want to be like as Christians? That is what um, flew in the face of the norm of those days. And that was the reason that the early church was able to survive. They supported one another and they gave generously. As a church, Victory Church, we want to be marked by these traits. And that is why we were involved in these various projects. We thank you so much for your giving to the various projects and in your tithes and offerings in the past. And we encourage you to carry on and to continue doing that. Because as you do that, you're a part of extending the Father's incredible heart of compassion and generos generosity to our community. So why do we do this? We do it in response to a father who loves us so much that he gave his son for us. He gave up everything for us so that he could have a relationship with us, so that we could be reconciled to him. And so in our response to his great love for us, we give. And so we encourage you to do that and to keep on giving and may you be blessed as you do. Sending lots of love from our home into yours today. We hope to see you in real life really soon. Take me a little deep 
then next up we have Murray interviewing his good friend Garth Jemmett for our next edition of Circles of Influence. Make sure you have a notepad ready. There's some really, really helpful stuff in there for all of us. We have been called to be influencers. We live our lives in such a way that his kingdom is advancing in our cities. New series we're launching called Circles of Influence. It's going to be an interview style series where we're going to talk to some people about their passions and how they are having an influence in their world. So why don't you join us as we go through the series that we can be challenged, inspired, and we can learn from these people that are being an influence in their world. Good morning to the Victory family. It's wonderful to be able to be part of the Circles of Influence series that we're running right now. And we've got my good friend, Garth Chemet, friend of about 25 years, businessman with a wonderful story. So um, um, greetings to you, Garth, and nice to have you with us. Thanks, Murray. Nice to uh, see you on the Sunday morning. Great. So we're going to, before we get started, we're just going to read a scripture quickly from uh, Exodus chapter 31, verse 1, 2, 3. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I fill them with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. And the reason we're starting this scripture is because when God calls us into our profession, doesn't have to just be business, but today we happen to be speaking to a businessman, God calls us and he chooses us and he fills us, us, fills us with all kinds of wisdom and skill and understanding so that we can be of use in his kingdom. And none of us are going to have a circle of influence if we're not living out of that anointing that God puts on us. So we're going to discuss a bit of that today with Garth. So our part, we've got three parts to our message, a bit of an introduction to Garth. Secondly, we're going to talk about how do we make ourselves available to God to have a greater circle of influence. And thirdly, just some pointers from Garth on how he grew his circle of influence from a one-man show in his apartment in Kenilworth or in Weinberg to now where he sits in boardrooms with directors. So we'll start off with a little bit of your story, Garth, and just how you got to where you are today. Just give us a bit of background in your studies and where you walk through from there. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Marielle. Uh, and keep me honest and keep me short. Um, in terms of my studies, I, I, I initially wanted to get into film um, many years ago, but there was nothing available to study at that stage. So I got into advertising instead and ended up thoroughly enjoying it. And I worked in advertising for many, many years. And about 16 years ago, I decided to leave and I started a clothing label, very foolishly, called Weapon of Choice, thinking that it was going to pay bills uh, and was going to do freelance marketing and advertising on the side and very quickly realized that the bills were not going to be paid by making t-shirts and my advertising. Say, God, these, were, these were Christian t-shirts with a, with a wonderful theme and a wonderful logo. Um, yes. Sort of with kind of a pre-evangelistic message, but you realized that that wasn't going to be the business, right? So what did you do there? Definitely. Definitely. So, so the idea, the initial idea behind the t-shirts was to, to, to kind of share the gospel in a, in an interesting and unusual manner. Um, and uh, there, was a, there was good sales on the t-shirts, but not enough to, to actually generate um, income to earn a living. So I realized very quickly I had to do a sidestep on that. And uh, so my freelance advertising and marketing uh, skills that I, I was developing on the side very soon became the main business, which I then moved from having it branded as myself to calling it Flick. Um, and that was just a nice catchy name that uh, um, I came up with and I thought it was an interesting um, uh, name to, to, to call, it, call a business because it was quite catchy. It talked about sleight of hand or flick of the wrist, which is where kind of magic happens. And uh, so I ran that business for many years. And um, last year, we rebranded the business to um, be called We Explain Stuff. Um, and the reason for that is, is that that is very much what the business has morphed into. It's become a business that explains complex 
uh, information for, for, for businesses and for business people. You do that through infographics and videos and a lot of and very, so, very visual, a bit like you called yourself a visual foundry at one point. Yeah, so it's quite it's quite interesting. What some of the early things that we were putting on on t-shirts were very kind of infographic like um, and very visual and interesting um, and taking complex con concepts like scripture and making it easier to understand. And in a strange and unusual way, that kind of principle around visualizing information carried through into the business that became Flick and eventually became um, We Explain Stuff. And obviously that moved from infographics into short films and presentations and all kinds of things for corporate clients. And what that took you from working with just some people in your local church selling t-shirts out of your boot to going to a net bank or an old neutral or whatever and working with them in terms of creating their communication strategies and influencing people at a level. I mean, maybe when you were in your early earlier days, you never thought you would ever have such a circle of influence. No, not at all. I mean, I, I really did think it was going to be a clothing thing at one stage, and I was convinced and um, really determined that that was going to be the thing that was going to um, yeah. uh, help me to earn a living. And it, it's funny how that kind of core principle of, of making things simple and easy to understand followed me pretty much everywhere I went from selling t-shirts to consulting to clients initially on my own. And as you say, Marie, to eventually working in boardrooms uh, with some of the, the banks throughout South Africa. So let's unpack that a bit on our second point, And that is really getting down to some of the nuts and bolts of it practically is how did you make yourself available to God? To increase your circle of influence. You said something to me when we were preparing for this, that you've made sure that you always try and, as we read in that scripture from Exodus, stay within your anointing. And with your anointing, I always say that a very good clue, if you're working in your anointing, is working within your passion, plus your talents, plus your skill, mm -hmm. as we read, and allow God's spirit to rest upon you. So how, how important has it been to find that sweet spot to be able to have a greater circle of influence? I'd, I'd say it's probably one of the single most important uh, things to try and figure out. And, and you know, for me, and you've often said this to me, the, 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 the something that you really love doing and is your passion and your talent, you don't really get tired of doing. And also you can do it when you're tired as well. It actually invigorates you. And, and so for me, I've, I've always been somebody that's taken concepts and principles and ideas, as you said rightfully so, right in the beginning with the Weapon of Choice t-shirts. And I've always sketched out concepts and ideas and thought about those things and, and, and how they worked in a very basic manner. And, and that, that has grown year upon year upon year. So it's, it's gone from looking at scripture to looking at business concepts but the same, as you say, passion plus talent has remained. I mean, I can quite happily, after a very busy day, sit in bed at night with a sketchbook and draw out some business concepts. And for me, I find it quite relaxing. So that for me is a key that I'm functioning in my, my passion and my talent. You know? And I suppose the same would apply for if you love encouraging somebody or if you or anything in that space, you're going to see very quickly. There's, there's a flow there. So for me, I do it quite naturally. Uh, I would say that some of the more difficult things to get right is to try and keep the noise at bay um, that I can find time as a business owner to stay in that space. But I would say that's a good clue. Is it something you love doing and, and, it, and it invigorates you? And then the second and third point under that is one is finding a passion of planet or your anointing as we're calling it. The second one, which I can couple two points together, we spoke about was you love to know that part of your influence is that you are open to hearing God's voice every day in where he leads you and what you're supposed to say. But also on the back end of that, which we must add is you're prepared to obey when he says so. I've had times when God's told me to go and confront people who are my clients, uh, which you would consider a career limiting move, but I had to obey the Holy spirit and I went in and actually did it. 
And I remember the chairman of one of the big companies in Cape Town, I sat there and I thought, you know, today is the end of my job here. But I spoke out. Um, so one thing is to hear God, but the other one, of course, is to obey God and to make sure that we are on his page. So speak to that a little bit, because that's, that's the real daily hard stuff. I think that's key, and I think there's a there's a couple of aspects to that. I think um, you know you, you, and it's going to sound very unspiritual, but I think you've got to get a good night's sleep. I think especially when you're that's running a business, or, or, or you're or you're a, or you're a mom that's uh, got children that are that that are kind of running around during these times in the day, and you're tired. I would say you know you don't hear God very clearly when you're tired. So I would say. Get a good night's sleep. I think that's very important. Um, and get up early and try and spend some time hearing God. But it's it's not always enough. I think you you've got to you've got to ask um, friends and family and those around you to you've got to share some of your thoughts with them as well um, and and see that you are actually hearing God in a God in a space. So I would say hearing God is 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 very important. I mean I've I've always said for myself personally. Um, I don't want to build what God's not involved in. Um, and I've, I, I can say honestly, there's been times where I've been convinced that this is what God's telling me to do, and it actually hasn't panned out. So I would say it's, it's something to, to, to really try and get right. And whatever works for you, whether it's going for a walk, for me, it's getting up early in the morning. Um, I, and, and then obviously talking to people whose opinions are value. I think it's a very important thing to... Um, to it's good to have that, that, that wise counsel around you. Yeah, we, also spoke, we also spoke about, you said something that was very important for, for me, and, and, and I think there's something for us to listen to. You said you are very deliberate about connecting with somebody every single day. What does that mean? Definitely. Uh, I, so so in, that, in that regard, I... Um, I was quite challenged by uh, John Maxwell put a quote out a while back that said, we have uphill aspirations, but downhill habits. And it, it really kind of struck me, you know, a lot of us think, oh, how great it'll be to do this and to do that. And, and I think at the end of the day, you've just got to do one thing daily that you think is, is, is going to make a difference, whatever that is. Um, and so for me, I, I do try as much as possible to just do the one thing daily. And I don't always get that right, I confess, but it is always top of mind for me to, to, to do that daily. And there's a, you know, if I think about faith, um, there's a scripture that says, how do you move a, a mountain? Well, you, 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 you move a mountain, a stone at a time, you know, and some days you're feeling brave and you can pick up boulders and other days you're feeling a little bit pathetic and uh, you want to stay in, you stay in bed and watch Netflix. But I think the important thing is to move something every day, no matter how big or small, um, um, because that builds on itself. And, so and also, God, I mean we, we don't know that one connection leads to another connection leads to another connection. So this whole thing of building a circular influence, it isn't something that kind of comes upon you one day as a big anointing. It's hard graft right. and it's building trusted relationships with people and every day investing into that. So let's move to our third point in the last few minutes we've got is how do you increase your circle? So the one graph that you're very, very good at and just speak to this is if you want to increase your circle of influence, build trust. And that just speak to the time frame and, and, and some of the ingredients that are needed to build trust to increase your circle of influence because you, it, sometimes it can take an hour and sometimes it can take, as you know, with some contracts you've got, take a year. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the thing with, um, with building trust is, um, to your point, it takes time and and. And there's an amazing scripture in Proverbs which says, um, wear love and faithfulness as an amulet around your neck and you'll win the favor of God and man. And if you look at faithfulness, it, it's about being consistent and being deliberate. And, and that doesn't mean always getting it right. There, there are many times where I have... I can see I've neglected a relationship. So I've actually gone back and made more effort. And it's, I think with trust, it's, it, it, it is being in there for the long haul. 
and not just doing things because you see that you're going to get something out of it. Um, I mean, you often used to say to me in the early days, add value first. And um, it's something that I try and live by. I, I, try and, um, I try and be deliberate in that space and go, you know what, I'm actually going to, I'm going to put myself out there. So God, and, just, and actually just, just share the story that you wanted to share with us about a certain company in Cape Town, quite a big ad agency, the way you just started by doing a short film for them. Yeah, so that, that is a really interesting story. So remember I mentioned right at the beginning, there was the weapon of choice clothing label that uh, we started. So that was um, my business partner, John Louis and myself. We had put this short film together. And remember I mentioned right at the beginning of the talk, I wanted to study film, but couldn't get into it. So I got into advertising. Well, there was nothing to study. So at this meeting, when I was contracting my skills, um, the client that I was speaking to, said to me in the meeting, I'd mentioned that I, I was creating these short films or I'd done one. And she looked at it and she said, wow, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this um, where there's a mix of these graphics that tell a story with film. She said, I have a piece of work that I'd like to do for Old Mutual. And she said, I'd like you guys to, to be involved in that. And it was very interesting because I had been working for probably about a year and a half doing just um, advertising consulting before the store had opened up. And I was really wondering what God was doing in this whole equation. I had all these things in my heart and it wasn't quite transpiring. And then suddenly this opportunity arose where this film that I created for this T-shirt company that I had started, which had just nosedived, had opened this door to this incredible contract. So it's just a testimony of God's faithfulness. And the funny thing about that meeting is she had initially said, look, I'll meet you, but I don't think there's anything you can do for us. So again, it just talks to that whole principle of being consistent and being faithful. Because but you then, never know. then God, sorry to interrupt because of time, but what happened then is you landed up doing so much work for them through that, that opened door into their business and it opened a huge door into Old Mutual. Exactly. So Where you are that, today in many cases. So, I mean, talk about one little form, yes. talk about the circle, the ripple effect of one circle that went from here to here to here to here. And, and, and how many years ago did you put that video out to, to them? 10 years ago? That video was probably 13 years ago. And, 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 and you know what? That ripple has not stopped. But you obeyed God. You used your passion plus your talent. You said to God, I want to reach out and put a connection, which you did. So you took a step of faith because I could have laughed at you and said, you know nothing about film. And mm. look at how that's paid off. The next point I wanted to put in was this whole thing about prayer, praying for doors to open. You know, sometimes we forget to pray. But how important is it to pray to find the will of God? Someone once said something which has always haunted me because it's so powerful. It said, are we asking God to bless what we are doing or are we doing what God is blessing? And the whole thing is don't ask God just to bless us. Let's pray into where God is actually at work and then join him because that's where you're probably going to get the greatest circles of influence. Would you agree with that? Definitely. I think, you know, and it's stuff we've spoken about in the past. If you look at, if you look at the Psalms, which um, David probably sang many, many times over and over again, in, in many regards, those are prayers. And I think, it's important to, to write those prayers down and to revisit them regularly. And to your point, to look at those prayers and go, okay, are those prayers aligning to my goals or are they aligning to God's, God's will? Um, because I think the sweet spot is where you, you unlock and uncover through prayer. And then you get favor. The, exactly. And then God, just to end off, you send me a few scriptures that God's spoken to you about, and some of them are some of my favorites as well. But the one that maybe you can just quote to us if you can, which is a good way to end before we pray, is Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. We could probably say it together. Trust in the Lord. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's a really good one. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And I think that is so important that we, we realize that we, we're actually teaming up with God to influence we're not we're not doing it and then he might come in and bless us and visit us 
were actually walking alongside him, teaming up with him as, as co-laborers. Mm. Garth, bless you, my brother, and I hope for everyone this has been a practical talk on increasing a circle of influence, so we just bow our heads and pray. Mm. Father, we want to be servants of yours who are always making the circles bigger. And Lord, wherever we are, in our school, whether we're a housewife, whether we are working with our own little business, whether we are working in larger corporates, whether we're working wherever it might be, Lord, I pray that you would show us today exactly how we can look out the window and see the people that are currently in our circle of influence. And Lord, just the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And we have no idea where it will lead, Lord. It could lead us as Garth went from a t-shirt to a mutual, Lord. We, we don't know. You are the God of the divine. And Lord, often when we look in front of us, we see the cloud, but when we look behind us, we see the golden thread. So lead us, Lord, we ask. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Really hope you enjoyed our Circles of Influence series that we put together. And uh, just to say that we are all called to be influencers. We are all called to be a godly influence in the world that we live in. And Proverbs 11.11 11 says, the influence of good people makes a city great. The influence of good people makes a city great. And really want to just encourage you, as we heard from various people, from Julian and Danny, and all of our guys that are out there that, we, that we're having uh, conversations, interviews with, that are hopefully it stirred something that you would be uh, more passionate, following after Jesus, wanting to be more like Jesus in everything that you do. And let me again encourage you, we are called to be influencers. Let us all go out there and have a godly influence on the people wherever and whatever we are doing with our time. See you soon. I want to encourage those of us who've connected with us this morning just to take a moment before we jump into the rest of our day. Why don't we engage with God for just a minute? Why don't we still ourselves before him and ask him about the one thing, maybe just even the small thing that he's speaking to us about or highlighting to us in that moment that we can again commit to prayer, be faithful again and diligent again in walking through, praying through, doing very practically so we can also experience some of this amazing fruit and breakthrough we've been hearing about this morning. God bless you guys and have an amazing week. Now we feel the wisest decision is to continue with online church.